This is the second video in the Biology Key Skills tutorial series. In this video, we'll be looking over microscopes as well as magnification calculations. In this tutorial, we will look at how to use a light microscope. We will look at the use of both light and electron microscopes, and we will calculate magnification using standard form. And for our big question today, the observed image of a specimen's length is 3 times 10 to the 3 micrometers. It has been magnified by 400 times its actual size. Write the actual length of the specimen in micrometers. So what are microscopes? Well, microscopes allow us to look into the microscopic world. For example, allow us to look at cells. They use lenses in order to magnify the images to make them bigger. They also increase the resolution of an image. Resolution means how well distinguished two points are. Similar to on your TV, you might have 1080p resolution or 4K resolution. The higher the resolution, the clearer the image so you can see more detail. There are two types of microscope that you need to know about. These are light microscopes and electron microscopes. Light microscopes are the one that you'll use at school. They are very cheap and easy to use. They work by passing light through the specimen. This means that we can observe living organisms, such as the water flea Daphnia, where we can observe its heart rate directly under the microscope. We can use light microscopes to observe large organelles, such as the nucleus or chloroplasts. The magnification isn't that strong, and the resolution, again, isn't too large. Electron microscopes, on the other hand, are much larger. These use electrons rather than light to form an image. They have much higher magnification and resolution than light microscopes, so we can examine much smaller organelles as well as the internal structure of some organelles, for example, chloroplasts and mitochondria. However, they are extremely expensive and we can only view dead organisms. We couldn't put Daphnia inside an electron microscope. For your GCSE, you'll be expected to explain how to use a light microscope. This is one of your required practicals. First of all, we need to be able to label our microscope. So, at the top we have the eyepiece lens. This usually magnifies objects by 10. We also have the objective lenses. These are normally times 4, times 10 and times 4. 40, giving us an overall magnification of times 40, times 100, and times 400. We have two focuses. We have the coarse focus, which gets it just into focus, and then the fine focus to fine-tune it and get it fully into focus. We also have the stage, which holds the glass slide, which has the specimen on it. Underneath, we will either have a lamp or, as we have here, a mirror with a lamp next to it sending light in. This sends the light up through the microscope so that we can see the image. As any specimen that we're using with a light microscope has to let light go through it, it needs to be very thin. This means that we will need either just a few cells or a single slice of onion cells. First, we will take our clean slide. We will then put a single drop of water on it. This will then hold the specimen in place. We will then cut a thin layer of cells from an onion or take a cheek swab in order to get our cells. We will then use tweezers to place the specimen onto the slide. We will then use a stain. This will dye the specimen so that we can examine it in further detail. This is very important if the specimen is completely see-through. Different stains will stain different structures. For example, methylene blue will stain DNA. We will then put a cover slip over our specimen. This is put down carefully using tweezers and then gently pressed down. This will make sure that no air bubbles are trapped underneath this cover. 
we then place the slide onto the stage using the clips to secure it. You always start with the lowest powered objective lens, so we would have times four. We then use the coarse focus in order to move the stage up. This makes sure that the slide is just underneath the objective lens. We then look down through the eyepiece and again using the coarse focus we move the stage downwards until it is nearly in focus. We can then adjust the focus again using the fine focus knob. This will make sure we have a clear image. We then need to use a clear ruler in order to measure the diameter of the cell within your field of view. We can then look at the specimen with greater magnification by turning to the next objective lens, which would be times 10. Then again up to times 40, meaning that with a light microscope we can see up to a magnification of times 400 due to the eyepiece lens magnifying by 10 as well. When looking down a microscope, we can also draw scientific drawings. Here we have two drawings taken of cells down a microscope. The one on the left is a scientific drawing, whereas the one on the right is a sketch, so would not be counted as a scientific drawing. In order to do a scientific drawing, we need to use a sharp pencil and outline the main features, making sure that we have clear, unbroken lines and that we don't do any colouring or shading, such as the drawing on the right. The drawing needs to take up at least half of the space available to you. This means it's nice and large and we can make sure that we're keeping all of the organelles and parts of the cell in proportion. We also need to label the key features, so if we were going to carry on this drawing we would label the nucleus, the chloroplasts, the cell membrane and the cytoplasm and we can make sure these don't cross over each other. We would then include the magnification, for example times 400. We would also add a scale under the cell to show how large the image appeared down the microscope. This would then allow for the actual size of the cell to be calculated. Being able to calculate the actual size of a cell is what we will now move on to. In biology, you will be expected to work out magnification. The first thing to remember is to work out the total magnification, which is the eyepiece lens magnification, usually times 10, and then we magnify that by the object lens magnification, which could be 4, 10 or 40. For example, if we use the times 40 lens, what we've actually got is an eyepiece lens of 10 and an objective lens of 40, giving us an overall magnification of times 400. The second equation uses this triangle here, where we have the observed image, which is the size of the image that we see, over the magnification and the actual size of the object. This can then be rearranged to work out the magnification by doing the observed image size divided by the actual size of the object, or alternatively, we can work out the actual size of the object by doing the observed image size divided by the magnification. It is also important to make sure that both your observed image size and your actual size of your object have the same units. If they don't, you will need to convert them both into the same. In your exam, you're likely to be given a picture of a cell with a line on it for you to measure. For example, this picture of a bacterium. We have got our line here to measure. In the exam, you literally measure this with a ruler. We have said that this is 500 millimetres across, and we've been told that the magnification is times 500. This 500 millimetres is the observed image size, so we will have our 500 millimetres. We've also been given our 500,000 times magnification. We need to work out the actual size of the object.
As such, we will do the observed image divided by the magnification, so 500 divided by 500,000, which gives us an answer of 0.01 millimetres, which is equal to one micrometre. Because microscopes allow us to see microscopic objects, it can be helpful to use standard form. This is where we change very big or small numbers with lots of zeros in them into something a lot more manageable. For example, 0.015 can be written as 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. To do this, we just need to move the decimal point to the left or the right. The number of places that we move the decimal point by, we represent by the power of 10. So that's the times 10 to the power of whatever it might be. If it's positive, the decimal points move to the left, which means it's a very large number. Whereas if this power is negative, the decimal point has moved to the right, and therefore it is a very small number. We can also use different units to express levels of magnitude. You need to be able to link these to standard form. When we're looking at magnification, we'll be looking at lengths. So we're we'll working in metres. The metre equals one. Our next unit down is millimetres. This is a thousand times smaller than a metre and can be represented by times 10 to the minus three. Below millimetres, we have micrometres. Again, this is a thousand times smaller than a millimetre. This can be represented by times 10 to the minus 6. It is important to note that the symbol for micrometers uses a micron, which looks like this. When you are writing micrometers, you will use this micron rather than the U present here. A thousand times smaller again gets us nanometers, which are times 10 to the minus 9 meters. And then finally, we have picometers, which are times 10 to the minus 12. To convert up the table, we divide by 1,000, whereas to convert down this table, we times by 1,000. For example, if we were to take 0 0.000005 metres, would be 5.0 times 10 to the power of minus 6 metres. We do this by moving the decimal place. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and then six. We could convert this into millimeters by timesing by a thousand. So this would be five times 10 to the minus three millimeters. And then divide by a thousand once more to get five micrometers. In your exams, you can be asked to convert between these or to give your answer in a different unit. If we now combine this standard form with the microscope calculation, we could get a question such as the following. So the observed image is 0.5 millimeters wide. When observed under 100 times magnification, what is the size of the actual specimen giving your answers in metres. First, we need to convert our 0.5 millimetres into metres. So this will be 5 times 10 to the minus 4. We now need to pick the correct equation. So the actual size of the specimen is equal to the image size, that's our 5 times 10 to the minus 4, divided by our magnification, which was 100. This gives us 5 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. This could also be written as 5 micrometres. However, for this question, we were asked to give our answer in metres. In order to use standard form, you need to make sure you take a scientific calculator into your biology exam. Within this video tutorial, we have looked at how to use a light microscope, we have compared the use of light and electron microscopes, and we've calculated magnification using standard form. So our big question today, we had the observed image of a specimen's length is 3 times 10 to the 3 micrometers. It's been magnified by 400 times its actual size. We need to work out the actual length of the specimen in micrometers. So the first thing we need to do is convert this micrometers. 
So 3 times 10 to the 3 is equal to 3,000. So we actually have 3,000 micrometers. This is the same as 3 millimeters. So to convert this to meters, this would be 3 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. I now want you to work out the answer to this calculation question. OK, so to calculate the actual length, we will do the actual real size equals the image size divided by magnification. The easiest way to calculate this will be to convert to meters to start with. So we have 3 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by 400. This will give us an answer in metres of 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6. As the question asked for the answer in micrometres, we now need to convert this value in metres back into micrometres. To convert first to millimetres, we would divide by 1,000 and then divide by 1,000 again to get to micrometres. Dividing by a thousand twice is the same as dividing by a million, which gives us an answer in micrometers of 7.5 micrometers. That concludes this second video in the Biology Key Skills Revision Tutorial Series. In the next video, video three, we will look at enzymes, including the lock and key mechanism, denaturing of enzymes, and how enzymes affect our digestion.